2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So what we're going to be talking about are false apostles. I made a video before talking about false prophets and how we can recognize them. And in several other places, I've talked about false doctrine, how we can recognize that and guard ourselves against it. So uh, it's time now to talk about false apostles. Now, an apostle in a broader sense of the word is someone that is sent, someone that goes out and is sent to carry the gospel. So if you've ever been on a mission trip, if you've ever been to your local jail, nursing home, or even out on the street ministering, in a sense, you are an apostle. But the way that we understand it and the way that it's more often than not talked about in Scripture is it is referring to a particular office of authority. The apostles had authority over the groups that they were in, the church that they planted, the churches, excuse me, that they planted. Now, of course, we know the 12 apostles for script, from Scripture that Jesus had handpicked for his earthly ministry. And then the apostle Paul, that the risen Lord Jesus actually commissioned to go and carry the gospel to the Gentile nations who at this time had not heard it. So the two uh, main qualifications for being an apostle, you have to either one, be a part of Jesus' earthly ministry, or you have to have been commissioned by the risen Lord Jesus to go out and to preach to the lost. So whenever I hear someone name today that is, you know, they're naming themselves as an apostle, then I ask myself those two questions. One, were they alive with Jesus during his earthly ministry? And the answer is no. Or two, have they been specially commissioned by God now in this day and age to be an apostle? Uh, and I'm going to hazard a guess and I'm going to say that that answer is no. You know, I see a lot of different people online when I get on there. If you just take, uh, take a few seconds and you get done watching this and Google Apostle and you'll see a list of names that pop, pops up, you know, like one of the newer ones out there is uh, Gino Jennings, who is um, uh, one this Pentecostal Apostle up in, I think it's in Philadelphia or some large city like that. And then, you know, there's like Apostle Catherine Crick and Apostle this and Apostle that. And by, if you're watching this a few days after I make the video, there's probably going to be more that have popped up on the list. But the apostles that we have today, I would say, have not been commissioned by God to go out and to minister. They have not been given the office of apostleship. You know, over and over when Paul starts his letters, he says, you know, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Uh, see, and like he says in Galatians, he says, not of men or by men. That means that men have not given him that office. You know, Paul didn't go through seminary and then, you know, be part of a local church and work himself up through the ranks and then the other men, you know, decided, well, you're an apostle because we like the work that you're doing. And see, that's how apostles get that title today. You know, they're part of their organizations. Maybe they're a rising star. They have church planning abilities. A lot of people come to hear them speak. So they, you know, get these different ranks as they go up and, you know, finally they get, to, they get the title of apostle. You know, and men, we love titles. We, we love titles, especially those that seem to elevate us above other people. You know, it gives us a sense of uh, superiority and importance. And then we feel that people should listen to us. But the qualifications for being an apostle is not that you're approved of by other people. It's not that you have a doctorate after your name. It's not that hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people have come to hear you speak. You have to be commissioned by God in order to be an apostle. And if you have not sat with Jesus under his earthly ministry, which none of us have, and you have not specifically been given the office of apostleship by the risen Lord Jesus, then you're not an apostle. You may be a gifted orator, you may be passionate, you may be very well educated, well dressed even, maybe a prolific author, I don't know, there's any other number of qualifications that we put on people, but these aren't the qualifications that God gives. You either have to have been commissioned by Him, or you're just not an apostle. So when I am looking at, is someone a false apostle or not, 
I have a very simple test. And that's when I see their name. If before their first name, I see this, I don't know 100% that they are a false apostle, but the odds are better than average. And so this is what I always look for. If someone comes out and they say, I'm, I'm apostle so-and-so, or, or I'm prophet so-and-so, and they have all these different titles that they have either given themselves or they have been given by their organization or by other men, then I don't trust them. I look at the fruit of their ministry. I look at where they have suddenly got this title in their life and what their testimony of that is, and then I judge it from there. But like I said, you know, I know very well that each and every one of the people that claim to be apostles today did not sit under Jesus in his earthly ministry. And I find it highly doubtful that they have been given special commandment by God to go out and be an apostle and have that authority over the church today. So it's just a quick video, uh, but a very important topic. You know, uh, Scripture tells us to uh, prove all things. You know, we, we are supposed to investigate and not just take everything at face value and believe everyone that we hear because everyone doesn't have our best interests at heart. They're either peddling false doctrine for profit or perhaps they're just peddling and disseminating and teaching uh, some bad doctrine, false teaching that they themselves have been taught. And, but nevertheless, that does not give someone a pass to just go through the world, to go through the body of Christ, shipwrecking others that are coming along. People like new believers that maybe are, you know, not very sound in the faith and can be just uh, pulled and tossed around by every wind of doctrine and powerful speaker that comes along. And so we owe it to them, we owe it to ourselves to investigate everything and judge all things by what the Word of God says, not what our own hearts tell us, not what our minds tell us, not what other people around us tell us, but what does God say? What are the qualifications for things like apostles or prophets? And then judge them by that. And if they don't meet that criteria where they're false and they need to be corrected. Now that doesn't mean that you have to make some big long video about it or go and shout somebody down because that's really not appropriate to do. Uh, but if you ever have opportunity to, then to be honest and say, no, I do not believe that so-and-so is an apostle because they do not meet the biblical qualifications because those are the only qualifications that matter. So prove all things. Check all things with Scripture. Don't take anyone's word for it.